Hey everyone, Sebastian here and welcome to At The Seeker, your place for creating an inspiring atmosphere for your tabletop role-playing games. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at streamlining a lot of the lighting control that you might have from a lot of different remotes or smartphone apps or controllers into one little tool to have behind the DM screen to take up less real estate and make it a little easier. Today we're going to be looking at, uh, I've got a little setup here that I used for a previous live play on the channel, which has more of a kind of forest setup. And we're going to use the uh, Elgato Stream Deck here to create a little bit of automation with some of the lighting controls. So any kind of lights we're going to have, smart lights or not smart lights or DMX controlled lights or even infrared controlled lights like little LED with the little little remote and stuff. We're going to try and automate as much as we can with this thing. So running the game, it's a lot easier when you can just push a button and it does all the lighting changes for that new scene. If you don't know what a Stream Deck is, it's basically a physical customizable keypad that allows you to control almost anything on a connected computer. Uh, this can range from playing music, controlling smart devices, in this case for controlling lights. And one reason I love using it for D&D or Wargaming is you can get that bulky laptop off the game table and just have the keypad on the table taking up very little space. At the heart of this setup, we're going to be making use of multi-actions, which is basically a list of commands that'll activate when a button is pressed. The first lighting commands to look at are for some smart lighting. These days, it's pretty common to have some smart bulbs or fixtures in the house, and usually to control the colors, you need to fiddle around with a smartphone app. But so we can focus on the game, we can pop some easy commands into the stream deck to change the environments when we need. For the easiest setup, it's always good to check out the plugin store on the Stream Deck to see if your brand of lights are available. Some bigger brands like Nanoleaf or Hue have dedicated Stream Deck plugins. I have some Philips Hue lights, so I'll be adding that plugin. Now that it's there, you can see it has a bunch of functions we can choose from. Dragging a command onto an empty button will let you fire off that function. Using the commands in a multi-action will also mean you can add additional atmospherics like ambient sounds and music. I may cover audio setup in more detail in a future video, so be sure to subscribe to not miss out. Now if your brand of lights doesn't have a dedicated plugin, then a workaround is to use the IFTTT plugin. IFTTT is a web service that connects with devices by sending commands over the internet. Now don't be afraid, it isn't overly complicated and usually just involves a bit of copy and pasting. For instance, I have some pin spot lights that aren't smart lights. So a solution was to use these Meros smart plugs to turn them off and on. There's no Meros plugin for the Stream Deck, so I'll make use of IFTTT to send a command to these. You'll need an IFTTT account and to create an applet. An applet is basically a simple formula that says, if this happens, then do this. So to activate the smart plugs, we'll need a webhook as a trigger. This name is what IFTTT is listening for to activate the device. Then we can add the device and depending on the service or device you're using, you may see different options. For these plugs, I made two applets, one to turn the lights on and the other to turn them off. Now to get this working on the Stream Deck, we'll need a couple of things the trigger name and the maker key. The maker key is a private unique name that can be found in the webhook service settings. Just copy the last part of the URL and paste it into the Stream Deck here. For these lights, I wanted to be able to toggle them off and on. So back in the Stream Deck app, I'll use a multi-action switch, which is two states that a button can switch between. On each state, I've placed each IFTTT command, and now when the button is toggled, the lights turn off and on. Whoa. A couple of drawbacks of using smart devices and lighting is that it usually requires a hub or some kind of network connection to communicate. And for traveling atmosphere seekers, this isn't ideal, but it can work great in a home style setup. Animated lighting effects can also be a little bit harder to control, but that's where I lean a little bit more on DMX lighting to create some spectacular light shows for tabletop gaming. DMX is professional stage lighting that gives a higher level of control with the type of lighting effects you can create. 
and there's a huge variety of fixtures with different functions to choose from. To control DMX lighting with the Stream Deck, you'll first need to have your DMX lighting fixtures controllable from your PC. You can see how to set this up in my ultimate DMX lighting video, which is a great place to start with DMX lighting. Essentially, the DMX lights are controlled from the computer with a special USB adapter and some software called QLC+. Since there's no DMX lighting control plugin, the plan is we're aiming to fire off some functions in QLC+, by simulating some keyboard commands. We'll need to install the Focus Window plugin from the Elgato store. First, we'll create a multi-action on a button. Then add a Focus Window command as the first action. This is going to make the QLC Plus window active. For the next step to work, we'll have to make sure we first have a couple of things set in QLC Plus. On the Virtual Console tab, this is an area where you can create virtual buttons for activating functions. Functions can do a variety of things, but for this instance, we're going to create a few buttons to activate some lighting scenes. The first button we'll need to create is a reset lighting button. The reason being you can activate multiple scenes at the same time in QLC, so this will make sure things will reset before activating a new scene. For the on button press properties, set it to stop all functions. We'll also need to add a hotkey to activate the button. I've set mine to zero in the key combination field. Now we'll make two more buttons, but instead of stopping all functions, we'll have these activate some lighting scenes. The important stuff here is setting the function you want to activate, what key combinations are needed to activate the function, and also making sure the on button press is set to toggle function on and off. When that's all done, the virtual console will need to be made active by switching to operation mode. This activates the console to now listen for those keyboard shortcuts. Now that QLC Plus is all ready to go, let's switch back to the Elgato Stream Deck app and finish off this multi-action. After our focus window action, we're going to simulate a couple of button presses. Drag over the hotkey command into the multi-action list a couple of times. The first one we're going to name Reset Lighting Scene and set its hotkey to zero. The second one will be named Activate Lighting Scene and we'll set its hotkey to one. So now what this button will do on the Stream Deck is focus the QLC Plus window, then simulate those button presses in quick succession. As an option, if you're using your laptop to view game notes, you can add another focus window action to switch back to your game notes. In addition to the smart lights and DMX lights, I sometimes use some of these cheaper lights here that are controlled by little remotes. Personally, I like using the remote activated ones while I'm on the road, but here in the dungeon, I've been experimenting to try and get these controlled all by the Stream Deck. The main problem with these is the manufacturers often use the same programming or similar remotes, which means with multiple lights, you can get some weird crossover from the remote signals. That said, there are a couple of workarounds that I've done to get these controlling from the Stream Deck in my home setup. The simplest is to use some smart plugs like we did earlier in the video, but to take advantage of the colors and functions on these lights, I've started using one of these little Broadlink IR blasters. They're set up like a smart device with the ability to record the IR signals from the remotes. Once you add what lights you'd like to control and record functions from the remote into the device, I found the easiest way to control colors or functions is by making some scenes in the Broadlink app. These scenes can be triggered by following what we did previously with IFTTT actions. You just need to use Broadlink as the controlled service. Then just pop the applet name in an IFTTT action in the Stream Deck and you can start triggering those lights. These IR blasters require line of sight so if you're worried about signal crossover, placing these strategically can help limit this. It gets the job done but if you have any other ideas, I'd love to hear them in the comments. With all our lights able to be controlled from the Stream Deck, now comes the fun part in setting up all the buttons you need to run some immersive lighting effects at the game table. I found that this is a library of effects that'll build over each session you prep for. And with multi-actions, you can really get creative with combinations of lighting systems while simplifying it all to single button presses so you can focus on enjoying the game. 
Well, I hope you found that useful for creating your own automated lighting controller with the Elgato Stream Deck for some tabletop gaming. I know personally I get a lot of good use out of it, so I'm curious about your ideas or if you think I've missed anything, let me know in the comments down below. A huge thank you to my amazing supporters on Patreon, without which these videos wouldn't be possible. A huge shout out to Chris Andrus, Luke Mansberger, Charisma on Command, and John A. Johnson. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to join the Discord community, we have links to the Patreon down below, or you can join via our channel memberships. Thank you so much for your support, and until next time, I'm Sebastian. Nailed it. <laughs> That's great and inspire. I'm out of here. I'm not doing that again. <laughs>